Welcome to another episode of Crime Pace of Badney Desert. I'm here in the Baja Desert, right where the Cardones start, okay? And everyone always mistakes Cardones for Saguaros. Actually, the Cardones are a little bit further down the road, but we did see some up on the hillsides. But I'm here to show you a very weird plant that's a relative. It's in the same genus as a, a plant that many people in the uh, southwestern part of the United States know, the Ocotillo, okay? So we're going to go check it out. First, we got to wade through this damn field of, uh, of scrub. Lots of choyas. Uh, we just uh, made it through some uh, agave. You can see this agave shy I some species called Manianus forms the offsets. Whatever it can get very big. You can see there's quite a few blooming out there. All right. See, look at that landscape. God, I love this land. I this I learned botany down here. This is part of where I really got into botany. Started coming down here 2012. But uh, you can see Alan's trying to make his way through the agave field over there. Lots of uh, lots of ways to get cut and uh, poked. Of course, the choyas. Louie doesn't like them, but she's become very adept at dodging them. The uh, those those arms break off stick, and yet they got barbed spines. Uh, we got all these different uh, Dudleys and whatnot. You got that Mammillaria down there now in the genus Cochimea. And uh, look at this Dudley right here, Dudley Apulvorolenta, massive bastard. Okay, massive beast. I first seen this this uh, species down here in 2015. Came back later. It seemed like most of them had been poached, and these do get poached really hard. But they're also very easy to grow from seed. So, uh, but anyway, I, this I thought this disappeared, but now I found that they're growing again. So you can see it's forming this nice colony, producing offsets. A lot of the seeds occur right in there. And those, uh, this is the old calyx of the flowers, which are pink and uh, pollinated by hummingbirds. The seeds are impossibly tiny, impossibly tiny, like dust-like. Very easy to grow from seed. Just put them on a nice mineral substrate. They hate heat and humidity. They're adapted. The whole genus is adapted, really, to uh, relatively dry summers. Winter rain, dry summers. But anyway, let's go Let's go check out the species in question. It's real interesting. I think you're going to like it. So graceful he walks through the agave fields. Look at all this. See this? Look at that. And that's a lot of important habitat for little critters, too, from everything from snakes to the lizards to the little kangaroo rats. And who doesn't love the kangaroo rats? What a dick you got to be if you don't like the kangaroo rats. You can see they've got uh, long tapering spines that can stab you as well as uh, very sharp teeth. Agave is an incredible genus. Over 300 species. Again, this is Agave shawii subspecies gold maniana. Look at it. That's the size of a dog. You got Dudley is the size of a dog. Crassulaceae is the family. And there's one behind me that's even larger than that. Anyway, the plant I want to show you is right there in the background. It's a uh, Fokiria columnaris, a relative of Ocotillo. Fokiria, the genus, has actually nine or ten species on it. For Fokiria purpusei down in Oaxaca is one of the most banger ones. It's got that photosynthetic stem. But this is pretty nice, too, Fokiria columnaris. The bujum tree, just a massive, massive plant. Last time I was here, these uh, plants were covered in... Uh, and beard lichens. You can see they're leafed out now. They're, they could become drought deciduous, converging on a form that many plants, unrelated plants from similar habitats and environments, have evolved. Just a you know a succulent stem uh, covered in uh, spines and leaves. Right, Pacopodium does this too, which is in uh, the oleander family of Pasinaceae. But we'll take a little bit closer look. I just wanted to marvel at the wonder it is. That goddamn Dudley of Pulverolenta right there. Look at that. Jesus Christ. That thing's that thing's the size of a yoga ball. Look at that Dudley. Jesus Christ, man. Look at how big that is. Holy hell. Unbelievable. You can see that nice, that nice patina. A patina of farina. I can't really see the flowers on it, but I'm wondering if they're hummingbird pollinated like regular ocotillos. Look, that guy certainly is enjoying hanging out up there. See that? Look at it. It's a kind of serious... Maritimus growing with the other Dudley species here. Dudley lanceolata. You see with those nice, you get those nice red speckling on those lanceolate leaves. Nowhere near as big as pulverolenta. But as you get this dog vomit like in all over the floor too, all over the ground. How'd that get there? Just an ascomycete fungus farming an algae. These marine, mostly marine sediments. Got some of these some of these damn agaves are just, look at that, look at that beautiful garden right there. Beautiful wild garden. Oh, look at that, it's nice. I've been visiting this population for almost 12 years now. You can see they're all in flower. I can't even see them little flowers, are they? I'm assuming they're probably hummer pollinated. Look at that, that the whole shit. Look at that, these goddamn, how old is that? Fukuria 
columnaris. Just a giant column growing from one of the most unique habitats in the entire world. All right, a lot of endemism in Baja, a lot of plants that only grow in Baja because it kind of acts like an island. I mean, it's, you know, it's connected to the mainland in the north, but aside from that, you know, it's isolated from the rest of mainland Mexico. Euphorbia misera right there, nice little shrub euphorb. You get upwards of 10 feet tall in some cases. It tends to stay about four, between four and six feet tall. There's an agave the size of a goddamn car almost. A little sedan, a smart car maybe. You got to ask some of these guys, what are you doing? Like, why, what happened with that? Column Norris. Apparently, he didn't get the memo. Look at this. I've seen some that loop all the way back to the ground. Loop where they form a little arch. Look at those flower spikes up there. You know, that's nice. Let's get a close-up on those leaves. Now, Ocotillo, Pocuria splendens, turns its petioles, the stalks that hold the leaves, into spines. What does the boot jump tree do? Where's it get its, where'd you get your spines from? Said, you know, that question is probably best answered by looking at a young one, okay? Where you can actually really get up there and see what's, yeah, I could see it, that's just a petiole. You know, there at one point there was a leaf on it. I don't know why this guy looks like, kind of like shit there. You can see the fruit is a dehiscent capsule, like yay, see those brown capsules? Little winged seeds when they're done. But you also got photosynthetic stem thing going on too. So, you know, you could do, you could make some chlorophyll in there. You're not gonna be as uh, productive. It's not gonna be as efficient, but in, in the dry season, right, which it certainly is not right now, they've got dumped on, you could still photosynthesize, even though you've put your leaves away. I believe these things are in the order of blueberries, same order as blueberries, Ericales. Love dog puke lichen. That's a genus Sora, by the way. See that? Ascomycetes and algae living together. It's probably a, probably a yeast in that menage a trois too. See the fog's coming in. Suddenly I feel like I'm in Dolores Park, San Francisco, and it's, you know, 2006 again. And where them spines come from? Were they once petioles or are they just coming out of axillary leaf buds? You know, they, they obviously come out their woody, so they come out when the tissue first emerges and it's produced, which is not going on here. It looks like it just lit up its leaves again. I wonder if it takes an exceptional amount of rain to actually grow and produce new tissue or what. Oh, oh, looks like I get the, I'm seeing some stuff going on at the top of that right there. See that? Does it look like there's a petiole? Is that where the spine comes from? There's actually new tissue being produced up there. Whereas this is just old woody tissue and you got them leaves coming out. No, no doubt these are deciduous in the summertime, in a summer, the summer heat. Yep, there's your answer. They're just petioles, just like Ocotillo. The spines are just old petioles. So as that new tissue emerges, it'll quote harden off, become woody. Uh, the leaves will photosynthesize for a while. And when it gets uh, unpleasant out and it gets dries out a little bit, the leaves will fall off and uh, you'll be left with just a woody spine and it will not regrow. It'll be dead tissue, that woody spine. And uh, when it needs new leaves, it'll just come out of the uh, the same bud that that uh, petiole came out of, the petiole turned into spine, but it'll just be fascicled, like so, like you see right there. So that's what it's doing there. So once that, once this, once this, the leaf on this tissue falls off, that, uh, that petiole dies, turns into a spine, and that's it. Oh, that's nice there. So you can really get a nice, look how juicy that is. It's a, it's a, how old is this? How old is this organ? I love this, you know, how old is this organism? I love this thing. Look, it's just bobbing and dancing, bobbing and dancing in a wind. Oh, that's, you know, that's it's so nice. Could you believe it's so nice? Look at that. You got to be here when the seeds go off, though. That's really what you got to do. We got, a, we got a desert liverwort yeah, in the sporophyte stage. See, with those little, those little umbrella-looking things poking up. From those phalli, the thallus. Who's that little bug down there? Is this the same species of liverwort and just a different life stage or what the shit? I don't know. No one's into the liverworts, you know? The, no one's into the bryophytes, the non-vascular plants. Hard to get people excited about them. But I think they're pretty fucking cool, especially when they're here growing on it. Oh, this is a very fine particled clay-like sediment, too. Especially when they're growing here in uh, this kind of habitat. I just, what is he doing? What is he doing like that? Look, you got blue dicks, dicolostoma. 
All right, there's there's some California floristic province influence going on right there. Nice monocot and the asparagales from the Brodea subfamily. Look at all those. It's staminodes. You got the uh, flowers in parts of three. You got a dwarf buckeye. You got a horse chestnut growing with a bunch of cacti and giant agave and boo jump trees. So it goes. Aesculus perii. I think it turns out after looking at the DNA, this is discovered to be more closely related to Asian species uh, in the genus Aesculus than uh, the Northern California one. Photosynthetic stems, spines, drought deciduous leaves, and it's got all this wonderful lichen just covering it. All right, not harming it. It's just hanging in there. They're living together. They're getting along. They're making it work. You know, look at that. More people could learn from that example. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Boo jump trees, everybody. For carry column Nars.